No. No. <laughs> Is that blackface? Not the blackface. Is that a fake ass? <laughs> Not the monkey! No! <laughs> monkey is kind of pretty scary. <laughs> I think this is best summed up before we get started by Dave Chappelle, who once said, Y'all ever see something so racist that you don't even get mad? <laughs> So, Chinese New Year, a beautiful time to celebrate the Year of the Dog, right? Chinese New Year. It's the Year of the Dog. <laughs> anyway, long story short, it is Chinese New Year, and Happy Year of the Dog to everyone. But a big, big piece of news just came out, and I figured we'd be the first to hop on it. Now, this is a super touchy subject, and the last time I tried something like this, I ended up almost getting sued in China, <laughs> and some crybaby whiners got really upset by me hurting their feelings. So let's pray to the dear dog god of Chinese New Year that this isn't going to happen this time. CCDV, be nice to us, okay? <laughs> I like to do a fair commentary and kind of explain what the hell we just saw because this took me by surprise. I had to run to the computer and rewatch it again because when we were watching it on TV, I actually was taken it I was completely taken aback by what I had just seen, okay? Now, if is this my western sensibilities? Is this my western sensitivities? To be fair, the West is completely overrun with PC culture nowadays. It's almost to the point where you can't really express yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't really say what you want to say. Mm -hmm. And it's getting super restrictive from every time I go back. It seems to be getting worse and worse. Whereas China is also like that, but not about PC culture. China is restricting thought and speech in media yeah. and banning things left and right. So they're both mm -hmm. kind of getting restrictive in a way. Now, you might forget that when you watch tonight's gala, and there's a lot of things that we can kind of dissect from this. Now, first off, first off Vivi, what is a gala? What is a New Year's gala, and why does everyone watch this? It's just an entertainment after the, what's it called, the whole family gathering. They start to finish their meal and then sit down, drink some tea and chatting, and then that's a, an activity that uh, everybody, every fam family gonna do, just sit around and watching TV, and especially the most fan uh, like the fascinating time will be like 12 o'clock and then they can just start calling different relatives or yeah. like the older generations to say like happy new year or something like that now this gala had i mean every gala kind of has a theme right mm -hmm. this year's gala's theme was kind of the cooperation between africa and china and africa and china have this really bizarre relationship because china's kind of run out of friends and allies they started a lot of projects and kind of tried to win over the favor of a lot of countries like pakistan and stuff and some of those have been successes but a lot of them have ended up in kind of really rough relationships because china has this kind of almost like american idea of itself in that it's a massive country with a huge amount of money and influence so it can go anywhere and kind of pave its way and it's weird. 63% apparently, according to CNN, 63% of uh, Africans, when they're asked, uh, had a favorable opinion of China coming in and starting all these projects. Now, China started tons of projects in Africa, uh, started high-speed railways, started uh, regular train stations and rail, rail systems, education, uh, pumped tons of volunteer Chinese teachers over there to try to spread the Chinese language. It's to the point now where actually I was, not that long ago, I was eating dinner on the street, and I overheard some, uh, how to say, happy ending massage women <laughs> chatting amongst themselves, Chinese women, talking about how uh, one of them just got back from Africa, mm -hmm. believe it or not, from Tan Tanzania, and she was there to service the uh, local uh, Chinese construction workers there. So there's tons of Chinese construction construction Ew. projects. Yeah, no joke. That's how pervasive it is. That's how many Chinese people are over there. My friend uh, is one of the last white families that stayed in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. when it was called like Rhodesia. Mm -hmm. He said that his entire town now, he is now learning Chinese because his entire town now is literally like China. It's completely overrun. They're using renminbi like to, to trade. Like I said, 63% of people have a generally favorable opinion. The rest, which is not reported in China, has a very negative view of Chinese people in Africa because with the money also comes private militias controlling diamond mines, completely diluting local culture and pushing Chinese culture inside. And there is a certain arrogance amongst China, a lot of Chinese people that go to Africa saying, we helped you, 
so you kind of owe us, we kind of own you. And some people are calling it, especially in Africa, are calling it economic imperialism, in that you pump money into a place that needs it, and then you kind of get that place. Like, yeah, it's under the local control of the local government, but really in Africa, money changes palms, local dictators are propped up. There's a lot of dark sides to this whole economic imperialism, because China's no stranger to giving money blindly to something that might not be the greatest thing in the world. Now, I'm no news presenter, right? But this is a lot of what I saw today in the gala. And there's a lot of things that we need to look at here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, basically, and we're, we're going to run through this real quick. First off, we see a bunch of African people mm -hmm. come out and doing traditional dances and stuff to the uh, Shakira song from the, to, was it 2006 World Cup? I hear that song everywhere in China. <laughs> Okay, well, like, at the very beginning, they just want to create a theme mm -hmm. about, like, that's Africa. Like, that's a stereotype of, like, you go there. <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> they there's, dance. <laughs> there's men running around dressed up as antelope, and there's, uh, for some bizarre, who's this guy, by the way, this Chinese guy, is he famous? It's, uh, he, he's a famous actor. Okay, why is, mm -hmm. why did he come out and do, like, a Native American, ay 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 ooh. They're all basically spouting out propaganda, all the lines that you hear about, Africa and Chinese cooperation. You hear, it, you see it on those red banners. They're one family. They're, They're one family, and brothers and sisters. sisters. You, you tend to hear this often in China. Yeah. Um, very interesting. Now, the story of this little of this little play, we can mm -hmm. call it, is basically this black woman. She says she's 18 years old. She doesn't want to get married so early, but mm -hmm. her family is putting the pressure on her. She wants to study in China, right? Like it's her dream, else and... right? So everyone in her local town is going to China to be a uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, exchange student. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So this guy is basically her Chinese teacher. Yeah. Right? And he's getting married in Africa yeah. to a Chinese woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's this is the story, right? Mm -hmm. Now the issue is that her mother is about to show up, mm -hmm. and his his uh, brother-in-law is about to show up to watch him get married to a Chinese woman. Mm -hmm. But she's told her mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just give me a second. That he's told his uh, he's told his brother-in-law to come watch the wedding between his him and his sister, right? Mm -hmm. And the the black woman, his student, the African woman, she's learned Chinese. She wants to go be an exchange student, but she's told her mother that she in fact will get married, mm -hmm. right? Probably to another African dude, right? This is what she's assuming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, a Chinese woman comes out in blackface. Do you know what blackface is? No. Blackface is when a person who isn't black dresses mm -hmm. up and paints themselves to be black. And this is actually some of the cultural sensitivity I want mm -hmm. to point out, is that you can't do that in the West because of the historical the history with slaves and mm -hmm. minstrels and mm -hmm. making fun of them. Mm -hmm. So basically, white people used to paint themselves as black people, very stereotypically. Mm -hmm. Kind of like this, mm -hmm. right? And then kind of make fun of black people in a very racist way, right? That yeah. was entertainment. Because, like, I was thinking, like, why we don't have that sensitive thought about, like, oh, it's not right. Because, mm -hmm. like, it's in China. Black people is not that much. And then if even they come over here, we are not necessarily marking them. What, uh, do, you, what do you think they used to, to make her ass so big? Probably the... The, the ancient, like, a dress kind. Oh, I was thinking it was like a massive balloon. A question I have for you, actually, though, mm -hmm. is you said there's not that many Africans in China. Mm -hmm. And I, I fully disagree with that. What do you call chocolate town? <laughs> it's not <Explain> necessary. Explain yourself. <laughs> it's not necessary making fun of that. It's just, you know, you know, Africans stay there and become like the most populated place. Uh, black people and the white people become like almost an even race in America. America is more like a melting pot. White people probably will at some point make fun of or trigger like the back because you guys story. But that never happened in China. Don't let me into this. Simon. No, like that never happened in China. It's like if in Africa people dress up like a Chinese people, I don't think any Chinese people will feel offended. That's the thing, though, is that that's my that's what I, we'll talk about this for a second. Then I'll get back into it. So she comes out with a pet monkey for mm. some bizarre reason. That scares me. <laughs> makes the trip all the way down to South Africa to see that her daughter is going to get married and is now under the impression that. Uh, 
you know, the, the black woman, the black face woman, the mm-hmm. black face Chinese woman, is now under the impression that super excited that mm-hmm. she's actually going to get married to this Chinese guy who's yeah. her teacher. So she's super pumped, super excited. She's like, can we take a picture together? Mm-hmm. This is freaking awesome. I can't help but look at how ridiculous she looks. That is disgusting. But think about it. Like, that's kind of stereotype, though. Like, think about all That's exactly what it is. It's a massive stereotype. And that's something that Western people usually try to avoid, right? So that's probably what's going to piss a lot of people off. Because I promise you, this is going to be all over the news. This is going to be massively I mean, if you not point it out, I seriously didn't even recognize that. You would believe that it was a black woman. No, I'm not. But the thing is, I don't feel that way because right, that's very interesting. I just like really innocently thinking about because you know like a foreigner couldn't be for example I want you to s- make some joke in Chinese mm. you wouldn't have that flavor sure so sure. of course they will thought about like just make a Chinese woman become look like I that. got you Can the thing is like I was gonna it. ask you I thought it was a little conflicting though they've hired clearly hired all these African people who tend to mm. and this is what I found from my black friends in China mm is the African-American friends that I have would never do something like this. They're very self-aware. They they know that this is racist and they know that this is something that their people, mm-hmm. you know, they're what they've struggled with, maybe not them personally, but their parents or their grandparents have dealt with their whole lives, right? So the civil rights movement, all this stuff is massively important to these people. Whereas the Africans are also kind of not in on the joke. So they're more apt to, to join in on something like this, right? They're paid by CCTV and they'll join in and they're not as triggered or offended. Mm-hmm. And you might have a point there, right? Maybe it's not it's not so malicious. It's not so, you know, out to get people. My problem is they've clearly hired very fluent Chinese speaking black people mm-hmm. from Africa. And you said that they don't have the flavor and the jokes and stuff, but to me these these people have way better Chinese than even I do. Like these are clearly HSK six no. level. Every sentence they said is not funny. It's not funny. No, okay, not so you're, funny. you're talking about the comedic you can't value. Bring the gotcha. feeling out. So you're saying yeah. that it was a necessity to make this Chinese woman. Yeah, I think this is a, like, as a Chinese perspective, that's a really innocent thought. It's just like, I want a Chinese woman can speak fluent and bring out the, like, the joke sure. out. And, I'm, but I, I get. <laughs> right, imagine <laughs> you. In America, they just, like, got swallowed by No, me. and again, it, I don't mean for this to, to be offensive if it's mm-hmm. inherently not, but I do have a couple counterpoints. Mm-hmm. Number one, if I turned on the TV and I saw a variety show, let's say The Late Show, mm-hmm. and I came out on stage in front of an entirely white audience, like mm-hmm. a Chinese audience in this one, right? Yeah. And I came out like this. Oh, I want to marry a, chi- a white girl. I would like to marry a, a white girl. If I did that, do you think, and I, I don't even want to ask you this because I know this is the truth. Do you think I would be viral and completely hated in China? You you know what? Things, everything need to be a balance. If you're doing that, make, make wear makeup but speaking normally, I don't think anybody gonna feel offended in China. Okay. But the thing is, if you're making that accent, nah. <laughs> I fully disagree. I've seen so many people be victimized by uh, the Chinese mouthpieces. CCTV and these, these Chinese newspapers and broadcasts run with this stuff. If there's anything moderately racist against Chinese people, they run with it front page, smear articles, this. Your original point is that Chinese people will inherently not be offended by something like this. And that's the most romantic idea that I have about Uh this. That's why I'm not offended by this. That's why I don't think a lot of people should be. But Mm -hmm. the counterpoint to that is that China, especially recently, has run ape wild with anything Mm anti-China and completely used it to their advantage. They're kind of like the little snowflake that runs and uses smear campaigns against anyone that even moderately like criticizes the Chinese government in, in a slight way right yeah that I think that's a government way oh but this is actually a <laughs> yeah this is a government this is yeah, this is pure propaganda a, a pl- yeah of course this is absolute propaganda and well let's move on mm-hmm. we have some more talking about so basically in this we're seeing that the 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 black face woman super pumped brother-in-law shows up and he says he's taking the African public transportation which is a giraffe and <laughs> that he, uh, he basically shows up and he's super pumped that he's going to marry his sister, right? mm-hmm. his little sister mm-hmm. comes to comes to check out um, the wedding basically but mm-hmm. the black faced woman, the black faced Chinese woman's convinced that he's actually going to marry her daughter mm-hmm. whereas he's convinced that he's going to marry his sister yeah. and both of them are kind of like arguing there's actually a line that they say, when they have a baby, it's going to be a big, fat, white baby. And the black woman, black-faced woman says, no, it's going to be a big, fat, black baby. And he <laughs> says, 
the Chinese guy says, no, if he's definitely going to get my sister pregnant. And when they have a kid, it's absolutely going to be a big, fat white baby. Right. Anyway, so basically what happens is um, there's a, a scene here where the, the guy is confused. He's like, wait, my sister mm. isn't black. And he says, who did your makeup? Because he's looking at that black woman, right? <laughs> he said, like, the pretty funny thing is that he said, really jie means, like, really localized. <laughs> <laughs> basically what happens is this kind of broils down into pure absolute propaganda and it kind of degrades when basically the blackface woman's like okay my daughter tell me the truth what do you actually want to do the black girl says i think it's too early for me to get married i'm only 18 mm -hmm. and i want to be like a chinese person i want to be like everyone in china i want to what did she say was it direct quote uh direct quote what is like, yeah she wanted Throw like a roll up her sleeve and, and work hard like uh, Chinese work people. Hard, like Chinese people and let the whole world thumbs up. And give her a thumbs up, right? And that that's where this degrades into what I was saying initially. Mm -hmm. And there's some quotes being thrown around here that you you'll see on you know on propaganda posters for Africa and Chinese cooperation. But mm -hmm. the the blackface Chinese woman says, "No problem, I fully accept your your proposal here, basically." And everyone you know in the crowd's like, "Oh, I thought she'd never come around." you know mm -hmm. and she says listen i respect that because i love chinese people and i love china because china uh volunteer hospital workers when in africa young, when i was young they, they came and saved her. my life yeah i don't know <laughs> when that could have happened because i mean some of this most of this cooperation is fairly recent but mm. she also says um they fix the roads and they've made everything better here so mm. i love china and i love chinese people and that's where and I'm not going to talk about this monkey. This freaking monkey yeah, is like exorcism. <laughs> this freaking disgusting. I don't even know why. Maybe that's another stereotype. Like a lot of monkey there. But that creeps me out. <laughs> anyway, um, that's where it kind of devolves into this. And that's my initial point was that it's not whether that this video or... I mean, I find it kind of hilarious that China thought it was okay to make this. Like they have a panel of people, right? And this is the problem I have with like a one party system, a one party state, is that the propaganda department is so localized and talking to each other that they're like bouncing ideas off each other. Yeah, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a really well scaled company or a media company would have had a lot of panels of people and like uh, test panels and be like, this is probably not a good idea. This is a good idea and come out with a very good product. Because what I see at the end of this is exactly what I said in the beginning of the video in that it looks like economic imperialism. It looks like we came over here, we're teaching you Chinese, we saved your life, we built your roads, we owe you, owe, we own you now, basically. This is, this is the impression that I get. So my point is that it's not inherently offensive. It's, it's very 1950s, like pretty offensive racist looking stuff. But the real message I get from this is that they are really trying to promote the image that China owns Africa now. That's the impression I get. And I, I have a feeling that's kind of what the government is trying to push here. Most of the Chinese wouldn't think like that. <laughs> but that's the goal, right? Is to, in the back of your mind, is to think of that. To, to make propaganda entertaining. Yeah, propaganda, like, every propaganda that's, like, sounds really innocent in the surface. You're saying, like, we're brothers and sisters, we gotta... It's like, even, like, Soviet Union, they don't right. talk about that anymore. Because, right. like, you know... <laughs> right, that's true. This is true. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of uh, hate from this. You're going to see a lot of people talking about yeah, this. You're going to see, see clickbait stuff. It's going to be everywhere, probably tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> it's going to be the biggest thing. It's certainly here. Mm. Um, even on Chinese media, I've, I went on on uh, Weibo mm. and Jeju, and I saw there are some people talking about it. And the young, younger people tend to understand. Mm. I see a lot of people kind of jumping on the whole like PC thing. They kind of want to be hip and cool like Western young kids. And like, this is so racist. This is so offensive. And you get the other side of people saying this is totally fine. I really think the bigger picture here is that China's kind of influence in Africa right now is, is massive. Mm. And I mean, the fact that I heard prostitutes talking about doing their rounds there, like China and Africa are very intertwined right now. And I think that it's going to be a slippery slope because China has ten tended in the past with these kind of projects to really piss people off. Perhaps the most offensive thing about this is not the fact that she's in blackface. It's the fact that this looks like a middle school play. Like, this is literally the most watched show in the world. Like, when we just watched it on TV. 
why is so little budget and care put into this? Is it all <laughs> going to Baijo and cigarettes? Because that was atrocious. You know what? The arts about this is worse and worse. I still remember, like, Chinese uh, New Year Eve. Usually, like, we will love the show. We'll just, like, talk about it on and on about every epic moment. Now, just, like, a lot of people don't even want to watch it. Even that's a tradition. Like, we just stay on our phone. Yeah, I noticed Because, like, the quality is just... Of course, the budget is a lot. But, right. you know, I don't know. Just disappointed. Yeah, that... that feels like so anybody can <laughs> think of. I hope I never wake up next to anything that resembles that woman or that monkey <laughs> because that was terrifying. <laughs> and on that note, I'd like to say thank you so much to the patrons and Lao winners for watching and supporting. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and go downstairs right right what you think. I know that the comment section is going to be an absolute battle and a pigsty of absolute and obscene insanity, <laughs> but it'll be fun to read. Yeah. And uh, I really appreciate you guys supporting what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to say that the biggest thing I've ever done in terms of my own projects uh, with Winston, I've just edited the first two episodes of Quest for the Best Chinese in the USA, where we took a 3,000 mile road trip across the West Coast and tried to find the most authentic Chinese food. And it's, it's freaking stellar. Trust me. Go Alice, watch it. At least I'm the big fan. <laughs> Thank you very much. You like what I do? Yeah. Oh, that's so, so. oh people always yell at me because oh, I put my arm around PC, you. PC, PC. Okay, cool. No, uh, no love here. No love here. Anyway, I want to say thank you so much, Love Winners, and I will catch you on the next one.